What's up? I'm Joe with OC Detailing, and behind me, I have one of the most anticipated EVs there is. It's a Lucid Air, and this is a Dream Edition performance. This car is pretty awesome from what I can tell, and I want to walk you through some of the things I like and maybe don't like about it. I'm going to start with the front of this car. The lights! The lights are really cool on this thing. I, I, um, I always like when I see something different, and Lucid, what they did, they did this big LED light all the way across the front. It looks really neat to me. I actually have the Lucid factory near my house. I live in Newark and I see these cars driving around at night all the time and it's literally unmistakable to me. I could tell and I saw them for months when they're testing them. So it's really neat effect where you get the light bar going all the way across the front. This is a very modern look and you start to see it on some of the other cars. Like a, a lot of German cars were doing this on the back. So like I, I have Audis and uh, the back of it has a big bar across, but I'm yet to see any manufacturers do that all the way across the front except them or maybe the Rivian has the cool donut looking bar across. Uh, so that's really neat. Also on this one, the Lucid actually lights up. Kind of a cool effect as well. Uh, one thing that I did think was, a, um, you know, I'm never a fan of chrome, so Lucid does have some chrome on this car, but it's really weird. They made some of the chrome matte and they made some of the chrome shiny. So they did this weird well, to me, weird two-tone thing where they got glossy chrome, matte chrome. I think it would have been a lot better if all of it was matte, but you know, we have a solution. We could fix that if we needed to. Along with doing some of the other two-tone stuff they did on this car, check out the roof. The roof actually looks like, like satin aluminum uh, along with the mirrors, but this is actually a painted uh, finish on this. So this is painted silver with a matte clear coat. This car particularly actually came with these pieces in gloss uh, and he was going to take the car back to lose it, I think, to have them put the matte ones on. But instead of them doing that, we just wrapped it with Expel Stealth so it matted out and matched everything. The easy enough solution and saves um, the customer from having to have his car taken apart, uh, which is pretty cool. So I, I, nobody, you know, after your car's been built, nobody really wants it being taken apart. Right along down the car, we have the door handles. And in my earlier take, I was like, ta-da, look how the door handle worked. And it actually got stuck like that. It is still stuck like that. So let me see if I can get the door handle to pop out with the key this time. Oh, there we go. Ah. So the door handle pops out much like a Model S, uh, except instead of coming all the way out, it just kind of raises up. Uh, and then you can pop the door open. Lucid did do something that I really like. They put a soft close on this car, but uh, it's the most aggressive soft close I've ever seen. It's, I mean, it's still a soft close where the car, the door closes itself. Most cars do that a little bit slower uh, than I've ever seen, some of the German cars and stuff. So Luz is like, nah, nah, we want the door to close very fast after you close it down. Along with the door handles uh, being set in the car like this, that, that's done to help the drag coefficient because Lucid really wanted to be uh, our, the range leader. So this car being a performance, uh, I believe has a little less than 500 miles of range. They have the range version that actually has over 500 miles of range. Uh, a comparison, the, the car that you would use, the comparison to would be the car behind you, the Tesla Model S. And I think even in the range mode, it only gets about 400 miles of range. Uh, this one's a plaid, so this one's uh, gonna do less than that, but very fast. It, it'll do much less range, but at a much higher speed because uh, those cars are insane. And this car is actually insane. This car is a little bit slower than a Plaid Model S, but not by much. 1111 horsepower, uh, quarter mile in 9.9 .9 seconds, zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds. Ridiculously like hypercar destroying speed uh, this car generates. And it does it with more interior space than most cars out there let alone the kind of cars that put up these performance numbers. I, I mean, again, your direct competitor to the Model S, you have a similar kind of room in there, but this one's a little more roomy on the inside. That's probably why they called it the Air. Uh, looking at some of the other cool features on this car, they did this giant front windshield, they did a glass roof, nothing new here, but still they did it a little bit different than others do. Like uh, they took some cues, I think from like a Model X or maybe a Model Y and the windshield goes all the way up to this pillar so the front windshield is massive on this car when you sit inside it feels very airy i mean no pun intended haha <laughs> and then when you sit in the back of the car there's a lot of glass there too so again it feels airy haha <laughs> i actually really like what they did with the wheels um some of the other evs out there they have what they call aero wheels uh, and they have these hubcaps usually not the best looking right so 
When I saw this wheel, if the customer did not tell me that this was a range wheel, I probably wouldn't have known uh, because it actually just has these inserts that pop out. So you pop the insert out, uh, you store them in the front trunk. The only thing I don't like about that is it's gloss black. So these things, no matter how careful you are, if you sit them down or in the car, they're most likely gonna rub. But it also leaves you options to take this out and paint it or change the color if you ever wanna do something fun with your car, uh, which I'm sure a lot of these owners will. Uh, underneath here, you can see the brake caliper in the rear. It's kind of cool. They painted it like this gold silver color, uh, which is pretty neat. So I think if I if I was driving this, I would actually leave these off all the time so you can see that caliper because it says Lucid on it. It's got a cool color. It kind of fits the rest of the theme of the car with it being like that goldish bronze. Uh, it matches this Dream Edition Air, which makes me wonder if, because that's the same color as that, is that just for the airs? I don't know. We'll have to see when the normal one comes out if it's all the same color. And then putting them back on, you just give it a little whack. Uh, going around to the back of the car, it again, you get this cool all the way across LED light bar. It says Lucid. I really like that design. Like uh, I, I, I love the big light that goes across the back and it's become more popular. I know like a lot of the Porsches and a lot of the cars in the Volkswagen group, Porsche, Audi, uh, Volkswagen, they all tend to have the light that goes across the back, same thing like Lamborghini and stuff. And I always, that was always really attractive to me. So seeing that on this Lucid, it looks pretty cool. And then built into the trunk, they actually have a spoiler. So a lot of times uh, you get a spoiler that's on a car. It's actually an add-on. It's kind of an afterthought. But the people who did Lucid, I feel like they really thought this through to have this molded into the trunk uh, because I'm sure it's there for efficiency, range, downforce, all the other things spoilers do. And they wanted it to be a permanent fixture because it's part of the panel. I, I, I highly doubt they're stamping uh, too many of these with or without this, but we'll see when the, new, uh, the later cars come out. Also back here, you have this enormous trunk space. So anybody who's watched my videos before, you know exactly what I'm about to say. I measure trunk space by how many dead bodies we could put back there. And I'm gonna give this like a four dead body or maybe three if they're American. You have a big space back here, which is pretty cool too. So you've got a ton of storage in this thing. You could keep a lot of stuff in here actually. You could put a whole nother set of golf clubs down there and probably four or five full-size suitcases um, over here you have, what's this? Oh, you get a goodie bag from Lucid. I don't know what this is, I'm curious though. So. We had full permission to pilfer this car, by the way. Oh, it's your charger. <laughs> Should've been a giveaway. So you have your charging bag and cable here, uh, in case you need to charge on the road. That's cool, it's got a little stowaway swap for it. That's actually really nice. That's why I didn't think it was a charger. I'm used to just seeing them laying around in the car. I don't know which brand does that. They just leave it. You know, in the middle of the, like you open the trunk, you're like, oh, there's a square bag here. Not hating on Tesla, I love those guys, but it's, it does make sense to have something like that. And then over here, you have a, another little pocket with a 12 volt cigarette lighter or adapter. I guess if somebody is stuck in your trunk and they have a phone charger with them, they have a power, they have access to power. They just need to know to remove this panel where the tow hook is and flip this lid open and hopefully have a flashlight and a cigarette lighter adapter, and they would have power back there. I really don't know why that's back there, actually. So apparently, there's some regulation that says you must have brake lights visible uh, at all times. So when the trunk's open, if you were like on the side of the freeway, like changing a tire or something, there's no brake lights. So they had to put them here uh, underneath the trunk. Kind of cool. This gap, like that's a pretty large gap right there. This bumper, like right here, doesn't line up right there. Um, the window trim's a little bit off. Uh, you got some inconsistencies on some of this rubber. Again, they sent this car out with a glossy top. It was supposed to be matte. These panels were supposed to be matte, but we fixed that one pretty easily, right? And then you get it mislined here. Um, overall though, it's not horrible. I mean, I've seen worse. It's just, I, I think it's the new car company thing where they have trouble doing this stuff because they haven't been building cars forever. That all being said too, also I know that from every owner I've talked to about this, Lucid is outstanding about you calling them and bringing issues to their attention and then being right there on the spot to fix them for you. 
Uh, so that's what everyone said their experience is so far, uh, is that Lucid is 1 million percent Johnny on the spot when it comes to fixing these things. Uh, but yeah, on the outside of the car, it's just it's just a cool, quirky looking car. I, I, I still don't know if I love it or if I just kind of like it or if it's growing on me, but it's like a very modern, retro looking EV, which I think is pretty neat. Hey, we needed something like this in the market, right? There's nothing like this out there. You get uh, the Model S, very sporty, uh, but also, you know, if you look at a Plaid Model S and you look at a Model S from 2016 when they did the refresh, they don't look that different, right? It's not, it doesn't stand out that much. It's like, I, I'm going to notice every time because I'm around them all the time, but a lot of people wouldn't see the difference. Uh, but with this, there's no not seeing this car and not thinking it's something special or not thinking that it's something different at least and wondering what it is. Uh, so that's really cool. I, I, I like that. And Lucid has that going for them. Now let's check out the inside of the car. I've worked on uh, three of these now and all three of them were a little bit quirky on the door handles. So if anybody wants to comment below or tell me what I'm doing wrong here, because I believe that <laughs> shouldn't happen. Maybe it's software glitchy. Cause the keys in my pocket. Push it harder. No, it's gonna break. The right side, the right side. Not that side, the other side. Hmm. See. Again, YouTube, don't crucify me. I'm not pushing that hard, even though Alex is encouraging me to break his door handle. One, okay, two clicks, open. There we go. So it works every time from the remote, two clicks, but it's, I think it's supposed to work from sensing me when I'm nearby. So getting in the car, just to show you how much room I have here, I am six foot tall. Um, and this is very roomy and very big for me. I, I'm gonna say, I have a lot of room right here. I'll adjust this seat to kind of where I would sit. Now, I don't know how to adjust the steering wheel because I would probably move it up, but uh, oh, brake, car just came on, gas, or I mean, EV accelerator, proton generator, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, but it's really roomy. I mean, it's very comfortable if I, if I put my foot where I'm supposed to, and then uh, I sit like this. The driving position on the highway would be, you know, one thing about the yoke steering wheel, and I, I I don't mean to keep comparing this car to the Model S, it's because it's two very different cars. I don't think they're even meant, they're meant for similar customers, but I think this is targeting a different person than that car would be. But the yoke steering wheel, I thought it was so weird when I move it around the shop and stuff. And I have a very nice car that I think it's a very nice car. And after driving one of those on the freeway, I realized that the way the steering wheel was placed, with it being a little bit wider, was like the most comfortable seating position I've ever been in. So that's what I go off of when I get in this car, I go like this. And while this is very comfortable, I'm holding the bottom of the steering wheel, not the side. So I don't know, it feels a little bit different. It's, you know, I don't know what that's worth or what it means, but just for you know ref reference, they have this two-tone thing going in the car. It's pretty cool. I, I, I'm not usually a huge fan of light colors, light colored carpets, especially. Um, being a detailer for many, many years, this kind of stuff ruins me because I know that half the time when people get out of their car, they cannot open the door this wide. It's gonna be more like this and they're gonna step out and they're gonna kick this and it's gonna get scuffed and be, be very visible. But, you know, I'm sure you can option these however, but this, this particular one has these white carpets which are kind of hard to keep up, but some all weather mats will help tremendously with that. Uh, looking at some of the other stuff in here it's it's laid out pretty cool you've got a screen over here you can touch you got a screen over here you can touch also you got this uh cool one that pops down right here that has a bunch of controls there this car just recently went through an update so it has all the dream drive features so i guess those weren't available up until the update went through we're kind of like their version of auto or their their version of a uh, driver assist and autopilot which does some cool things it helps you stay on the road and keep the lane holding and whatnot the tech in here is really as it should be actually for a car that costs one hundred seventy thousand dollars, it's all really really fancy it feels really premium in here nothing feels cheap the steering wheel feels like it's made of heaven i just want to touch it it's actually great i hope the steering wheel is enjoying me touching it as much as i'm enjoying touching it it's an air. Look how airy it is. It's so airy in here. Like this is this makes sense. It's called an air because you know this is where they came up with the names. They're like they were like, what should we call this car when they're making the prototypes? So like someone said it and they're like it feels very airy and they're like, oh yeah, let's call it an air. 
And that just makes sense. That's that's probably what happened. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> the seat, same material as the steering wheel. Feels very nice. I moved the seat forward like any nice normal driver would if they're not a dick. So I could sit like this. And that is much better. Again, I am six foot tall and I have bad posture, so I'd probably actually sit like this, not as upright as I, I was sitting. And there's plenty of room back here. It feels a little weird that my knees are so high up. And I thought about that last time I was back here, but with the seat scooted a little bit forward, it's actually really nice. It's, it's not uncomfortable at all. I thought it was so weird that I couldn't stick my feet under the seat, but no, it's great actually. This, is, this feels really comfortable. I was sitting my normal seating position. I would feel pretty happy about being back here for a long drive, except I have a screen here that has a sunshade. That's pretty cool. So I can extend the sunshade for a long drive, the sun won't be on the back of my neck. You know what I can't do though? Play a PlayStation. I don't know which I'd rather have, a sunshade or a PlayStation. I'm gonna go with sunshade, just for this video. I'll, I'll say I'd rather have the sunshade. <laughs> I didn't notice this last time, the vents, uh, multiple adjustable vents, that's pretty cool. There's two back here, so I'm sure you'll be very comfortable. So let's talk about the, the other really weird thing back here. Did you notice this is black and this is white? In the back seat, they made it feel more airy by making the interior white. They also, the door panels are different. I don't know how I feel about this. If my, if this is my inner OCD, it bugs me that it's not symmetrical. I mean, it is symmetrical back to front, but it's not the same. Like the door panel up there continues to the door panel back here, but it no longer has Alcantara or denim. It has gray and white leather and a speaker grill that it does not have up there. Yeah, I would ride back there, no problem. The customers who've driven these cars, uh, particularly one of them, uh has had every tesla there is and um he told me he likes his lucid better he said he's gonna keep the lucid forever it drives so great the only thing that's hard for him is uh getting weaned off the tesla charging network but he said as soon as that problem solved like he will never drive another car i'm excited to drive this because i want to see well, how different it feels because i'm told it is the magic of this car happy ending happy ending it has a massage feature, so I was seeing what other features it had through voice control, but apparently I need to set up Alexa for the voice command to work. So let's check out some of the screens and the tech in this car. I'm going to start with the massage feature because it's really cool. You get like all these different settings, a screen that explains what's going on. Um, I'm massaging Alex right now so he can look uncomfortable. <laughs> Would you like the deep massage? Do you, do you want the deep one? Hey Joe. Hey what? Are you warming up your snack? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's really pressing my butt now. That's really <laughs> weird. <laughs> so I'm sorry for the goofiness here, but that's I'll stop I'll stop it from pressing your butt. Thank you. So this car has a themes. If we close this door, you push themes and it changes the colors of everything. So escape, space, uh, solitude. I'm curious. Oh yeah, the lights change color in the floorboard too. There you go. Mm -hmm. So there's lights in the floorboard. Inspire. I want to be inspired right now, so I'm gonna leave it on that one. Um, so that's a neat feature to have. It's fun to play with. Like at night, I'm sure this looks really, really cool when everything's dark, when just you can see the uh, lit up doors and the floor. So you can recline them and move them all kinds of around. They uh, apparently are lazy boys, so you have any which way controls to, so if you want to sleep in this car, you could put your seat all the way back and make the seat just how you want it into a bed. So it's showing you if anything's open or closed. Get this cool screen. Uh, something else that's actually really neat in this car that happens right here is um, this. I really like the way this it does the uh, backup camera in here. So you get a direct backup camera there and you get your 360 camera here. Which when you move it, it shows you, you know, this is one of the more intuitive ones I've ever seen. Uh, so I always thought BMW had the best sort of, uh, interface for this on the new BMWs, but this one rivals it. It's very close. Like, uh, I know like a lot of cars have similar tech to this. I, I, ha I have a car that has this kind of camera, but it's, it's okay. But this, this setup is actually really, really neat from somebody who moves cars around all the time in tight spa spaces and, you know, around shop around other cars. I found this to be a very, very good system, which is very neat. 
and I'm sorry I keep saying very, but I'm just trying to express how excited I am about this because it's hard for me to not sound like a hater talking about the other cars, but they did a great job with this. Good job, Lucid. It's up here, you get all your radios and stuff, and then you push your navy button. It's got a very intuitive nav. That's loading. <laughs> it's like the door handle, it's just waiting to pop out. So, when I was playing with this before, I noticed this. Very fluid motion when I move this thing around. Uh, it's actually, the processor in here seems to be very good. Um, they should have used the same processor here for the door handles. I, 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 I can't tell you how many times I've walked, tried to get into one of these cars when they've been here and the door handle gave me a hard time. So, hopefully some software update fixes that. Uh, but you get Navi up here. Um, you've got all your access to your streaming stuff. It pops in down here when you do it. So, it goes from there to there. Uh, the audio system in here is supposed to be really, really cool. Uh, we played with it, and I heard it. It sounds really nice. Uh, again, $170,000, it should sound amazing. So, And they got that, right? It's a Dolby Atmos, which is cool to have it inside the car. So if you were watching a movie in here, it probably would be very um, encompassing. Over here, you've got all your light controls, the auto on and off. Pretty basic. You could lock the car, close the car, open the charge port, um, auto high-low. You also have your steering wheel controls here uh, for your adaptive cruise and your dream drive. So this is the lane holding. This is the speed holding. Uh, the knobs, they did this a little bit different than most car companies do. So they put a button here, but they also made it like this. So normally you would have like a knob that would go up and down, but they made a little button on top of it too. And it just looks different. It's kind of cool. Um, actually, you can unscrew this and it's a salt and pepper shaker too. So if you're eating in the car... Just kidding. It looks like a salt and pepper shaker, though. Could you see it? I see, I see. Now that I mention it? Yeah. This is Alex, who's always behind the camera and never on camera, who's always filming me and has to listen to me ramble about nonsense and take these takes ten times and also have his butthole massaged by the car. Unfortunately. Say hi, Alex. Hi. Uh, applications. You got access to all this stuff. Audio. You've got an equalizer. You've got volume. You've got connectivity. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, home lead, data sharing permissions. Uh, oh, that's cool. It comes with home link. They don't... That's pretty neat. Um, some cars actually don't come with that, which is annoying. Uh, display. You can put the units in uh, not American or American. It's a dream drive. You have um, intervention only, warning and intervention. for That's lane departure. So we call that cell phone assist. So if you're on your cell phone and you're like driving with your knee and you swerve, the car will put you back in the lane. Uh, it's a pretty cool feature. Apparently this car lets you know if you're a distracted driver though. Oh, um, distracted driver warning, drowsy driver warning, so it's got both. Uh, I don't know, so where's the camera at in here then? So apparently there's a camera in here somewhere because if it's saying distracted driver warning, there's gotta be a camera in here looking at me everywhere there's cameras looking at me including in here it saw alex's butthole getting massaged uh traffic alerts blind spot monitoring uh collision protection cross traffic auto park and wheel curb assist i saw one of these cars that already had a learning curb on the wheels so uh i don't know if the auto park did it but it is a curb assist, so maybe. <laughs> we also have the climate control in here. Uh, so pretty standard here, right? Uh, but you get heated and cooled seats. So after it massages your butthole, it can cool it off, Alex. Or heat it up, whichever you choose. Whatever you feel in the mood for. I don't know, hot or cold. We've got separate climate control for the rear, which is cool too. So the people in the back. No cooled seats in the back, but you do have heated seats, which is actually, you know, it's it's good enough. It doesn't look like anything I've ever seen before. It literally looks unique to this car, which is cool. Um, and they've laid it out very intuitively. Everything's super easy to access. Uh, I like that they gave you some buttons, you know, so you have steering wheel controls for stuff. Everything's very reachable. Music, the mic. Obviously, you saw the happy ending feature didn't work. Maybe that's coming with a software update. You know, looking inside all the materials, like I said, I, I love touching the steering wheel. It feels amazing. Probably as much as that seat likes touching Alex's butthole. You want me to turn the massage feature back on, Alex? So here we are. I'm gonna take this Lucid Air Dream Edition Performance. That's a lot to say. 
<laughs> uh, for just a quick drive, um, just to see uh, how it drives, how it feels compared to some of the other EVs and other cars I've driven. Uh, let me adjust my seat, make sure everything's all good there. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to leave it in smooth mode for now, just so we can get a, uh, uh, a normal idea of how this would probably be driven every day. Um, so let's go. It's very quiet. I will say that this, this car is extremely quiet. It's like, it's so quiet. It's doing me my favorite thing and leaving me alone with my thoughts. Just leaving the shop. There's a noticeable whine in here that's a little bit, I think it's a, I mean it's electric motors and stuff, I know what the noise is, it's the uh, EV noise. Seems a little more, more pronounced in here than I'm used to hearing in Teslas. Um, and that's the electric car I drive all the time that I have to go as a reference. It feels very plushy, like the ride's not, um, well, it's also in, it's in smooth mode, so I wonder if that uh, messes with the air suspension as well, because it feels very much, uh, like it's got active air ride that's keeping this as least bumpy as possible for me. So pretty smooth so far. Let's see see how it feels up at speed. You know the visibility is really good. Uh, Kind of seems like it should be though with all the glass in here. Oh no, this car's fully detailed and done, and that guy's blowing stuff. Ah, don't blow the car. So, I'm just gonna kind of do a quick drive over to uh, by the Lucid factory basically, like by my house, which is really close to the actual factory. Uh, for these. Um, there's a place over here I feel like it's pretty safe to do a, a, just a, a 0 to 60-ish launch um, so we can kind of experience what that's like in the most aggressive settings. Um, yeah. Again, it's really quiet in here. I, uh, I hear some road noise, but it's not obnoxious. up here at the light. Must beat the Prius. Nobody ever wants to get stuck behind a Prius. Nobody. <laughs> so I have the cruise control activated right here. So let's see what happens. Um, you know, maybe I should have. Hmm. Maybe I should have seen how to activate it, but I think this is just in a, a drive assist, so basically it's just going to help with um, lane holding and whatnot. I wish I wish some car company would make one of these cars <laughs> just naturally when you push the accelerator sound like a Jetsons car. That'd be pretty cool. Boop, 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 boop. Might get annoying over time, but it would be fun to have that option. That'd be, it would be pretty cool. It makes so much sense. Hmm. How do you act? 
activate the cruise control. I see this. I have it up there. It says adaptive cruise. I'm imagining there's some easy way to do this. Oh. Um. So I feel some body roll there. Uh, I wonder if that's because it's in its the smooth setting. But let's see what it does when it's in the sprint setting. Let's see if it gets a little more aggressive. Sprint mode enables maximum performance and torque is recommended to use only by skilled advanced drivers under suitable driving conditions with lucid <laughs> summer tires installed. All right, we'll try it. Let's see what happens. devastatingly fast um, I didn't even get the 60 I backed off but uh that felt I felt that in my chest for sure wow this is a very powerful car well 1100 horsepower kind of expected it <laughs> uh, and noticeably the steering wheel feels much heavier when it's in sprint mode so not only is this car very big and has hypercar destroying acceleration Feeling how stiff this is, um, and there's a curve up here. I can kind of see if it still has the same body roll. Um, I bet this thing had some track time during its development with five people inside of it. So I kind of want to do this curve at speed so I can see if it feels the same. Oh no, car's planted. It's, it's much more planted in this, this so that that was a suspension so by design the car is supposed to be less planted when it's in smooth mode and I'm gonna stop right here and launch this car one time because uh, there's no one behind me one time here we go that is a uh, pretty violent yeah, very, very, very smooth, powerful acceleration. I, I don't, I feel it in my chest, but I didn't, I don't know. It's kind of weird. <laughs> it's pretty cool, but kind of weird. Yeah. I normally would have Alex in the car with me doing this ride along with me but he wasn't available so I had to go by myself with this 3d camera which is kind of neat it's a new toy uh, I'm gonna put this car in swift mode which is the other driving mode which means fast but I guess not quite as fast hmm I'm still curious how to activate the cruise control. Maybe... I should have Googled this before the drive. Totally unprepared for this. This is a good job on the top of this car. The sun's coming right in it. And I don't really feel any heat coming through. That's, uh, that's actually pretty neat. I can't say the same when I see other windows like is uh, you actually still feel quite a bit of heat coming through. Um, oh, there we go. So this button right here activates the adaptive cruise control. I've got it set on 40 miles an hour speed limit. Uh, I've got cars in front of me and behind me and a bus to the side of me and a box in front of me that I need to avoid. And a truck that's driving in Tulane, California. That's okay, we support our truckers in Canada um, so I'm guessing if I do this cruise control speed goes up that's what happens so it'll go a little bit faster this feels like an adaptive cruise control system to me let's see if it does any it's tracking but it was I don't feel a steering wheel fighting me as hard as I do in some cars um, 
but I'm sure I'm sure it does its job. I'm sure it does a really good job of lane keeping. Let's see right here if it'll do this little curve. Oh yeah, it did. I'm sure that this uh, dream drive will get better over time too. Uh, I do know that like I, I have a I have a feature like this in my car and it's it's okay, but. Um, I don't know how much this is supposed to be like AP or just driver assist, right? But I know that when I get inside of a Tesla that I feel like the uh, the AP system in that car is a lot better than most of the standard driver assist stuff like I have in my other car. Um, it seems a lot more intuitive and a lot better at like, you know, doing big curves and stuff like that where uh, the systems that usually look like this uh, are are good and they're great for traffic like if you're sitting in traffic you can almost keep your pinky on the steering wheel and be no problem or you know sometimes I drive to Tahoe and I could just kind of chill and it'll it'll you know it'll take most of the roads and whatever else and it'll slow down for traffic and stuff but it's not as advanced as the AP system so I'm not sure what Lucid was going for so I just got back from my drive in this Lucid Air and let me tell you this car violently accelerates uh, I felt it in my chest it is really really fast cut pretty much what you would expect for an 1100 horsepower car but it was totally opposite of what i expected because i felt it in my chest but i felt nothing else uh so there's some magic going on in this car where you have this insane acceleration but it doesn't feel quite like it it doesn't feel like it has in other cars when i feel that kind of uh uh pushback i just felt the after effect where i was like oh i felt the g-force effect on my chest so it was really neat uh what lucid did here this is a very special car it's driving is pretty unique uh, i noticed from one mode to the next i was able to drive this thing like a cadillac and then when i put it in uh, the most aggressive setting it felt very much like a high performance sports car so that's a cool feature you have all these uh, electronic settings on the car that make it go from daily driving just cruising around to hey let's go to the racetrack I, I, I think they're I think they're really onto something here and for as anticipated as this EV was they hit the spot I mean some people could be mixed about the way it looks with the uh, you know it's a little bit different it is definitely unique you can definitely tell it's something different but uh, I, I I'm a fan thanks for watching I'm Joe with OC detailing please subscribe for more videos